Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today, for your creative essential needs, we are going to talk about creating thumbnails. And unlike other tutorials that I've seen, um, I'm not going to just whip you into Photoshop and show you how I make thumbnails, but I will illustrate how I put mine together, but I'm mostly going to give you tips on different ways that you can put them together, because half of what defines you as a creative individual in the cyberspace of YouTube and beyond is your style of going about and doing things. And so I decided to make this little uh, video tips because I was playing around with and manipulating some uh, new versions of my Destiny thumbnails because I wasn't quite so happy with them. Um, this one's new, even though the character in them is a little lower res. And I've also redid this particular thumbnail, which was for the speaker for Destiny that speaks with the Wanderer. And, of course, a scene from the cutscene that he was in. And then, of course, number four, which is just kind of gen general purpose. So we're just going to jump into Photoshop, and I will take you on a tour as to how I put together my thumbnails. So, you have a different set of options depending on what you want to do. If you're somebody who uses a webcam, you may find yourself more photogenic to put in your images than just regular characters from the games you're exploring. But what I like to do is I like to find an interesting background image, or in this case, a picture from the opening cinematic of Destiny, where the three astronauts discover the Wanderer and the golden age of mankind begins, and then I put the episode number, or sometimes I put the title of the game, or the logo, along with what I'm doing in this particular episode as a subtitle. But in this case, I've got an interesting background, I've got my character from a smaller cutscene during the noob starter zone to throw in there, and then of course just the icon number that tells you which episode number it is. And so, you have some different options here. This is what I did for the trip to the town for the first time. I took a clip of the tower or the citadel where the guardians hang out and do their thing. Grabbed a picture of my character from a score screen, which is why it's a little lower res. And then I blended him a little bit with some curves and everything to bump up the contrast. Namely because when you zoom way out, you still want to retain a lot of detail. You want this icon to be really bright because look what happens when I turn this off. It, it gets really muted, and it gets really hard to see the details, and I, I'd like to say you're probably immediately less interested in its existence. And while YouTube does recommend that you upload these at 1280p, or not 1280p, but 720p, at, you know, 72 dpi or higher, for multiple different screen varieties, the vast majority of people are going to see your thumbnails at roughly this size. This size is probably, for perspective purposes, for my distance from my monitor, about the size it's going to appear on phones and tablets and stuff like that. And then if you're really, really interested, you can zoom way in and say, okay, that holds up pretty decently under magnifying glass, even though this smaller image kind of pixelates a little bit. And then, of course, we have the speaker image. And if we look at the speaker image, the speaker was actually blended with some color, because he's kind of orangey and I didn't like that, so I gave him a little purple to tone with the background. But for the most part, there's just this background image, the number, which is just font that I can quickly change to like 7, so that I have the ability to quickly thumb between different uh, episodes on the fly once I create them. And then this, of course, always stroke your text, your fonts, your numbers, so that they are easy to see, because let's turn off the Let's turn off the stroke. It's kind of hard to read that. But then we put on the stroke. And then suddenly, shazam, it's a three. Then, of course, I just have to accent the, what's going on. I say, this is the episode where we see this cool image of the Wanderer, and this is also the episode where we get to meet the speaker. So that's a pretty simple, um, different way to put together your icons. The speaker's image was originally this image, as you can see. It is just a screenshot I took from the game, which is what I like to do anymore. Um, I think it's more meaningful to your playthrough if you pull images directly from your experience when you're creating something. And then, of course, going in here, we'll also look at the image I made for Scurry. 
for the app review most recently where I grabbed a picture from their website. This is their, one of their icons they use to display it on the App Store. And then I grabbed from another one of those pictures, I quickly just wanded the Scurry logo, added a nice little stroke effect to that so that it would pop out more and you could read it because it's a little hard on you know, a white iPad background. And then I added the label that says App Review so people know what I'm doing here. You know, yes, it's a game and it is a game review, but it's most games are apps, so they know what I'm doing. It's on phone. It's um, a little bit different than my normal reviews. And we've also got my transistor. We've got the number here, number 13. You always want to display these prominently in one of these corners. Always avoid the lower right-hand corner, though. The lower right-hand corner is a no-no zone. If you actually invite yourself to YouTube, let's just jump to YouTube real fast. You jump into YouTube, and you see that lower corner is filled with this, you know, these numbers that tell you the length of this particular video. And then if you hover over, it becomes a watch later. So anything you put in that lower corner is going to be covered up. So you need to be careful about that. And then, obviously, like I was saying before, it's all about what you want to put in here. Because, like, most people who played Transistor just had this. It was just, they had a wallpaper in the background. They had the logo from the game that you can find on a PNG. All I did was Google this, and I found the Transistor logo that someone had already turned into a transparency. Probably the people that made it. And then I put together a series of different backgrounds so that each one of my thumbnails was a little different, and then you can cycle through them once you've made them to kind of give a little bit of visual differentiation between them. And then, of course, just because I could, um, I prepared for the end video, which I haven't made yet because it's kind of wonky, but I said the finale video in the bottom here so you know that this is the, f the end video where you get to see the ending. And then, of course, just to spice it up, because a lot of these looked similar, I just threw in my Chupacabra icon to kind of personalize it a little bit more. And you can kind of do that, you can kind of not. It doesn't actually matter how you choose to do it. Um, I'll even show you some other examples before we jump into some other details. We've got um, the fall. And for the fall, I didn't really like their logo. Their logo was kind of small and hard to read. So all I did was I went on to defont.com, I picked up a font that was considered 8-bit, but was still pretty readable, so it just has these little chunks missing from the corners, so it kind of looks digital, old-school, analog digital. And then I said The Fall, which is the name of the game, put in a, a screenshot from my playthrough, and then basically stated what the game's about. You have one mission, to save your pilot, because you're a mechanized robo-suit with a person inside who's unconscious and they might need medical attention. And we've got The Floor is Jelly. I had my little Chupacabra character and took the logo from another screenshot I took while playing and then stroked it so it was easier to read on this gelatinous background. We've got Strife. Strife, they had um, a number of their wallpapers that the people who made it kind of made available to the general public and they themselves had stated, we don't really care if you want to use these for your playthroughs or for your thumbnails or for wallpapers or whatever. Just as long as you don't try to sell it, we don't really care. And then I grabbed their logo threw in the beta tag and said what particular tutorial mission I was playing when I was doing the tutorials and this was the story of Caprice or this lovely lady in the background. And so you have different options to customize it and I mean really it's all about playing around with this. You see all I did here was because these images were so different all the time I instead of making a crisp clean edge here I just used the eraser tool along the edge here with um, a little bit of blur on the on the edges and then I gave it like a little light feathering effect as I kind of cut around the image to allow it to blend better with whatever was behind it so it's almost got this motion blur visual to it because a lot of the images in Killzone Shadowfall had these little highlights these bloom motion blur effects so it's really just up to you um, I did this one for the insomnia when I did a little promo for them um, I just took the Insomnia logo, quickly chopped it out with the pick whip, and then blended it with feather, and then put under Kickstarter demo. So people just, they, ob they obviously, this is a very iconic type of logo. It says this is kind of retro diesel punky, and then I just said it's the Kickstarter demo. So it works out pretty well. I mean, it's all really just up to you and what sort of art assets you can find. This, the Indie E3 Jam had their own logo, and then they had a background banner, 
and then you can just fill it in with some text that tells people what you're doing, what episode number it is, and it's usually not too complicated. But again, make sure you play with it at multiple sizes, you, you scale it down really small, and you say, yes, I can read everything and I can tell what it is. Scale up really big, okay, it's not too pixely. Um, but again, 720p size video or size images is recommended by YouTube. I always recommend 782 DPI or higher because 72 is the standard screen DPI for most monitors. They have gone up in recent years, but there's still a bunch floating out there that are lower. And so that's really all you have to worry about. Um, so let's talk about fonts, because th I hear you not saying, but this is probably going to be important to you. Larry, I, I really need some fonts. Where can I get some fonts? Because you have a very readable font. And the answer is, there are plenty of places. Um, I'm very familiar with for mockups, flosstype.com. There's a, a bunch of different themed fonts that you can choose from that are made by a bunch of um, graphic designers that make these independently and sell them on here as kind of like pay what you want, like Humble Bundle. And if you like them, like maybe you want like a metal type, a metalocalypse type font, you could pick a Treyu or something suave because you're playing like a, a dapper gentleman c character in some weird game, you could play Lavendaria. Or you could just go with something very simple and readable like a uh, franchise. One thing I definitely recommend is to stay away from cutesy things like Bender or what's another one? Mission Script is kind of edging on the um, legibility when you get really small, but um, I would avoid things like Caliburn, Silburn, however you pronounce this, um, and definitely things like Enemy. When you scale this down, I'll just show you, it gets really kind of hard to read some of these when they're at multiple different sizes, and you've got to remember that your stuff is going to appear on mobile. That might not be your primary source of traffic, but it will appear there. And because these guys are selling these and trying to make a little bit of a living from these, if you're going to pick one of these and you find yourself using it for your YouTube brand, like your logo or your marketing, or just use it a lot in your thumbnails, you don't have to pay them 100 bucks, but kick them 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, buy them a beer. And uh, yeah, I mean, it helps them out a little bit. Let's them know that their work is appreciated, and you're using it, and so I think it's I think they deserve a little something. If that's not what you're into, or you don't like any of these, there's places like defont.com, which as you can see already, they have a bunch of different themed fonts that you can pick. Um, for Dead Space, they actually have like themed fonts from Dead Space. You can also find Transformers in here, like here's the Dead Space font. Let's look for Transformers. Yep, Optimus, Megatron, and you can definitely find things that you're looking for here. And there's other places like Font Squirrel. Just Google it, you can find a bunch of places. If you want a vetted font that I can definitely recommend that a lot of people use, you wouldn't really be stepping on any toes, a lot of people use Bada Boom BB. And um, I think it's derived from another Bada Boom font that's um, commercial. It's basically a comic book type font that's like used for the pow, zing, vap, biff, you know, action sort of um, montage effects inside of comics. And so this is used by a lot of people. I believe the Game Grumps still use this in their thumbnails. It was actually, there's a version of this that the Yogscast paid a typographer to modify Bada Boom for their own like Yaga Boom font that they use internally for all of their stuff, so it's a, it gets a lot of mileage. However, I'd be careful with using this. Um, I got kind of tired of it after a while. I used it heavily in things like Goat Simulator and for some of my League of Legends videos that were okay, but people didn't really like them. So, I mean, just, just be careful. It just depends on what you're interested in, but I will link these all in the description, so if that's something you're interested in, by all means, grab, grab it up. So I don't have too many other um, recommendations besides that. You definitely have a whole host of uh, things to play around with. And if you're curious about something, or you have a f a, an idea for a theme, or like a style of thumbnail for a new series you're starting, and you, you want another a second opinion, I do work as a graphic designer in my day job. Um, I'm certainly not the expert of YouTube thumbnails. I have spent quite a bit of time on it, so if you have a question, Feel free to dump it in the comments. I'll do my best to give you a hand if possible. 
If I don't answer you back, just give me some time. It's also possible that I just don't know what to tell you. I mean, there's some questions that just don't have answers. And you know what, just because I feel like it, um, I'm going to make you like a transistor template here. Um, I'm not going to include these font pieces. I'm just going to include where they're at, including the stroke. And I'll just throw this template um, in the description as well to download off of my Google Drive. So you can play around with that too if you will feel like it. Um, otherwise, that's been my tips and tricks for making thumbnails on YouTube and beyond. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If it was, throw me a like in the video. Uh, maybe consider just subscribing because I'm working on different tutorials for you guys coming up, including one on about how to make your very own end index page for your videos that you can put a couple other related videos in here so that people know that you're working on other cool stuff and they can click these or click subscribe. And I'll go into my design process for my own video index page and also show you how to make your very own using different types of vector kits that are available for free online. But once again, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Catch you next time.